Coming into 2024, Jorge Prado has to start as the favorite. Yes, he's a defending champion, but with two motivated guys in the form of Jeffrey and Tim, and Roman Fevre with his six Grand Prix victories last year. What we are looking at is a potential four, maybe five way battle for a world title. And if that is the case, then uh, this championship is gonna be worth a watch, that's for sure. Welcome to the 2024 MXGP Motocross World Championship with me, Paul Malin. And for the first time since 2005, MXGP sees not just one, but two five-time world champions lining up to compete for the title. And for the first time ever, neither one is defending champion. Roman Fevre, Maxim Renault and Paul Jonas are the three other world champions in the class going for gold. But don't discount the likes of Jeremy Sewer, Ruben Fernandez, Glenn Coldenoff and class rookie Yago Gears getting in on the act as well. Here's our clipboard, season two, <laughs> sync. <laughs> Coming into 2024, Jorge Prado has to start as the favorite on the basis that he's a defending champion and he won the most races last year. Jorge Prado will win race one here in Argentina and it will be his 64 career race win. 14 races on the Sunday program plus 11 Ram qualifying races, so 25 races in total. And in fact, he topped all of the charts during the season, apart from most Grand Prix victories. He only won two Grand Prix victories. So what it showed is he doesn't have to win every round to be world champion. He wins the 2023 FIM MXGP World Motocross title. You work your whole life just to get to MXGP and be champion. So, uh, yeah, when you make it happen and, and, and you win the title, it's just a relief. I start all talking or? Yeah, yeah, I just start now. Yeah, so, no, number one play was straight away. Even last year when I won the title, I wanted it straight on my bike. Um, it's been always a dream to ride with a uh, number one. And and it's super cool, you know, every time you get on your bike and you see that number one, it reminds you a little bit of the past, all right? So, from all the training you did to get to the world championship and, and to get world champion, so it reminds me uh, of the hard work I did, so um, to keep you know, uh, working hard to keep it on my bike. In the tent, right? Yep. Yeah. I actually feel a bit better. Always, always struggle a bit the first race of the season. Like, I feel like getting a bit older, I'm getting dirty this season. So I feel like I, I need a bit of time to warm up, but I'm feeling good, I'm healthy, got no injuries at the moment, so. Uh, Definitely looking forward to the new season and um, yeah, hope to come out with a good weekend. But Jeffrey Hurling is right through the pack. He will win the Grand Prix of Sardinia. <laughs> A lot of people look at Jeffrey Hurlings as the fastest man on the planet still. Reputation goes a long way and he still has that reputation that strikes fear into a lot of the riders on the grid. 
He wins the Spanish Grand Prix, and history has been made here at Into Xanadu Arroyo Molinos. Jeffrey Herling tops the all time win list 102 Grand Prix victories for the Bullet. Jeffrey Herling. When he's in good form, and by all accounts, the last race he did before Argentina, a Dutch Championship race in Holland, he was on fire. Just focus on myself. I know Tim is very strong. I saw him race. I saw his races actually in Italy, and his, uh, he looked really, really strong. Apparently, they have a new bike, and that bike looked really good too. So, yeah, I think he, together with Crocker, is the man to beat. With Tim Geiser and Jeffrey Hurlings, you're looking at two riders who are looking for redemption. Tim Geiser didn't have the chance to defend his championship in 2023 because, of course, that preseason injury at the Italian Championship race. Jeffrey and Tim are both going for that sixth world title. Difficult year last year, uh, you know, when I uh, missed kind of like almost all the season, I came back for last couple of GPs. So I'm super motivated for this season and, uh, you know, we, we had a good winter. We have a new bike with Honda, so uh, yeah, I'm excited. I was missing races, you know, I was missing, especially after a long break that we usually have every year, you know, uh, from the last race, uh, let's say last year until now, the first one, first GP. Uh, but yeah, would be nice, you know, we, we're going to have a long season, uh, many GPs, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, uh, good too. First day at school. <laughs> Roma's pace uh, was super strong. He won uh, many GPs last year, finished second in the World Championship. And it was visible that the bike was uh, as well really fitting to him. And, uh, and he was very united with the bike. So, uh, so we only uh, worked with him on the few aspects to, to really fine tune a few points. You can't write off Roman Fevre. Five Grand Prix victories in a row, six for the season last year. He has shown that age is not a barrier. He's shown that he's gelled with the Kawasaki now. I would expect the Frenchman to come out firing on all cylinders. He wins here in some bound. Closes down the attack again. Makes it back to back wins here in Indonesia. He wins some bower. He wins here in Lombok. Ready for to start the season, uh, fit, and uh, and then yeah, we see where we are. It's a long season, so uh, no no stress. I'm on a good position because I saw on the pre-season races that uh, yeah, speed and fitness were there. So uh, just to adjust few things, and then it will be good. Maxim Renault would have been disappointed with his championship last year, of course. He picked up that foot injury in Spain and his season was on and off after that. Just past pit lane is when he pulled up, but yeah, Maxim Renault pulling off the track. If he's 100% fit, expect Maxim Renault to be in the mix. Yes, he's riding for a new team, as in the MXGP infrastructure has changed, but it's also the same team that he won his MX2 title with, of course, Kamea. Will he get the kind of results that we've seen from him at Motocross and Nations? 2024 season is about to start. I'm ready. I had a good winter preparation. We worked hard with the team. New team, uh, also a little bit new bike, you know, like we kept on developing. So we made the evolutions and new steps on the bike. So I'm feeling quite confident coming into the season and uh, hoping for a good one. Jeremy changed teams. 
Perfect. Is that oh, is that yeah. brief? <laughs> <laughs> Can you be brief? <laughs> they pay a lot of money, aren't yeah, to film this. I know the paparazzi. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you're gonna Maybe see. Shut down the camera. You, you're gonna see something new now. What oh, do you but think? That's beautiful green. Uh, yeah, it's a British racing green. Nice, eh? Uh? Yeah. Jeremy, he is a rider that he goes a lot with the feeling. He needs to have a really, really good feeling, very precise feeling uh, technically to the bike. But no, actually, honest, if I have to be honest, good. It's been good. It takes time. Every track you come, you start from zero and then you end up, wow, this is perfect. I'm really happy. You go to another track, you're like, ah, here we need to change again because it doesn't work. But um, by now, I can't complain. When you finish second or third in the championship for the last few years, you can't write him off. He's very, very consistent, but if he's to win the world championship, he now needs to be consistently first, second, third, every race. Kawasaki are hiring him to win the championship and his teammate, Roman Fevre, to win the championship. Something that's always interesting when we start a new season is the riders that are moving teams. You have Jeremy Siwa, he's at Kawasaki now. Glenn Koldenoff, he's with Fantic. If Glenn won a GP with his new team, the Fantic Factory Racing Team, that would be his fifth manufacturer that he gets a GP win with. Yeah, good. Good. Calvin Villanderin, he's now with Factory Yamaha. It's nice to finally see that he's actually earned his place in this team. Mattia Guadagnini, he's on Hasvana in the MXGP class. It'll be interesting what he can do in his new team, on the new bike. Alberto Ferrato, he's now with Standing Construct Honda. He's under the watchful eye of Stefan Everts with Paul's Jonas. So I think that could be the missing piece of the puzzle and to see how that would affect his results this year. Eva Monticelli, he's back in the paddock on an MRT beta. And also, as with every year, you have MX2 riders moving up a class to MXGP. And this year, you've got Jago Hitz, you have Roan van der Moosdijk, Kevin Hawkmo is a rookie, Isaac Gifting is in the MXGP class, Joss Gilbert, and Jan Panzer, he's moved up a class to MXGP. So it will be interesting to see what they can do. is going to be interesting in MX2 and none more so than for the Red Bull KTM factory team. Once again they line up as defending champions. Andrea Adamo, he will want to show that he is um, a worthy champion. Can he add to it? That's the, that's the big question. At the moment it's Friday, my bike is a red, with a red plate so I'm really happy, bike looks good, gear looks awesome so Super happy. And it will be Liam Everts who wins the Grand Prix here of the Netherlands. What a way to round out the race. Talk about digging deep. Congratulations, Liam Everts. The goal is always the same. The goal is always to win and, and, and to succeed in what you do, but it's, it's, it's a process, you know? If we will get there this year, who knows? If we'll get there next year. Who knows? I'm here to win and, and I want to be successful and I want to succeed in what I do. One of the guys missing from the first round will be Liam Everts. His preseason was going pretty good. Uh, a training incident left him with a broken thumb. The big question is going to be how much time does he miss? We've been working behind the scenes to give him a better bike. Hopefully we put them all in the package and put all the steps in the right order and they can um, you know, focus on the racing and take a step, step forward again. Simon. Ah, 
Thank you. Mm. Oh, looks great, huh? Simon Langenfelder, on paper, possibly, in terms of stats, comes in as a favorite. Um, he's got three Grand Prix victories, he's got 10 race wins, was on the podium more than he was off it last year. It was a shame that he picked up the injury mid-season. He's finished third in the championship twice, the last two years running. It's not like being a factory rider is new to him anymore. You know, riding with Ducali, riding with Red Bull, Gas Gas factory team, all eyes, I think, will be on him. Can he deal with that pressure? I think we will see a, a stronger Simon Langenfelder going forward, and he could be the man to be if that happens at round one in Argentina. Kaido Wolf was unfortunate last year in that he got injured after picking up the championship leader's red plate. Could he have gone on to win the championship? Who knows? He had a few injuries last year, but um, yeah, I'm fully recovered. So um, had a really good off season, so ready to go for another great year. Uh, yeah, the goal is always like uh, to be the best and most consistent as possible. And uh, yeah, the goal is like everybody yeah, to win. But uh, we need to be uh, smart and think good what we're going to do. Thibaut Beniston, the last couple of years have been up and down couple of injuries here and there. He won the Grand Prix in France at Villars, which obviously would have been a massive highlight for him. But after that, unfortunately, you know, he, he got injured and he was missing for quite a lot of the seasons. For sure, the season is not going to be easy. It's quite long. I think it's been a long time that I didn't arrive to the first race with that, that much hours on the bike. so. Feel pretty good, yeah. I think it's going to be a good, uh, good championship. From a personal point of view, I think he'll be a lot more balanced and I think ready, you know, ready to sort of take it on. I think he will believe that he can be world champion this year. Well, we actually, 250 project was already on the paper for a long time, so we always want to have back that program. It's, it will be not easier first year, as we know, but uh, we are just trying to give our best. I think we are already with uh, good base packages for, for starts. So we have Rucho Zanke and Team HRC, and it's been a while that they've ran an MX2 bike. It's the first time that he's in a factory team, and the first time the team has run an MX2 class for a while. It's good, it's good when you, when you find some new kid, like a younger one like him. Of course, for him, it's good experience to be uh, under our, our team, you know, it will be good experience for his life as he's growing now. But it's good, it's something that nobody expected anything, so but something can happen, you know, and that's what he is good about. Something that's definitely going to mix things up this year is the new team in the paddock. And people have been talking about this team for a couple of years now. It's the Monster Energy Triumph Factory Racing Team. Hey, can do not text to me? with young riders Mikhail Harrop and Camden McClellan and it will be exciting to see what these guys can do. Coming into the 2024 season there's definitely some rookies worth mentioning. You have Andrea Bonacorsi in the Yamaha factory racing MX2 team. He's the reigning EMX 250 champion and he turned some heads at the Motocross of Nations last year helping Team Italy get on the podium. Another rookie this year is Mark Antoine Rossi. He's been signed by Red Bull Gas Gas. He has teammate Simon Langenfelder 
and Paul Gay Prado. He's in a really good place. It's his rookie season. He's with experienced teammates. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do in 2024. <laughs> Here's how the riders line up for the first MX2 ramp qualifying race of the season. And it's Lucas Koonen who goes to the line three tenths quicker than Kaida Wolf. So it's a Nastan Husfana Factory 1 2. Mark Antoine Rossi, the rookie to the class for Red Bull Gas Gas Factory Racing. He's third, just another four tenths further back. Edging out is team leader, actually, Simon Langenfelder, who goes to the line fourth. Then we've got the first of the Monster Energy Triumph, Mikkel Harup. Then Brucho Zanke. Will it be a beautiful entry and exit for the riders in MX2? Last year we had a lot of carnage through here. So far, so good. But into turn two, and it's Adama who leads the way. Mark Antoine Rossi with his hands full. Kaido Wolf slips up the inside. Well, it was outside, inside combo for the Wolfman. He looks over his shoulder as he emerges in fourth place. Adamo all of a sudden under attack from the Team Wolf. Comes into land, Beniston just hits a breaking bump. So Lucas Koonin now for the fourth, who wants to make quick work of the German ahead of him. He's left and right, he's using every inch of the racetrack, goes the long way round here. Langenfelder hears him but can't do anything and he cannot prevent Lucas Koonin going through and into third place. Meanwhile, bar to bar, Kaido Wolf back alongside Adamo. He may challenge and he does challenge for the lead. Gives him an elbow as he goes through as well, but oh, and he tried to come back for more. Adamo hanging on. Kaido Wolf under pressure, immense pressure from the 96. Oh, tell you what, rule number one, beat your teammate. Don't duff him up on the way through, though. Well, you can, just don't go down in the process. Nicely done, sweet move around the outside, but Kaido Wolf. Wow, absolutely nothing between him. He looks across cheekily at De Wolf, and again, shows him a wheel, shows him a lot of attitude in the process as well. Koonen now second with just over two laps to go. Ah, oh, bar to bar between these two again. Play nicely, boys. Comes in hot as Koonin there in second place. The second rider in shot in blue goes high and wide. That may have just cost him some time here. Not quite. Ah, oh, switches it back. Splits the way between the two. Adamo and uh, DeWolf. And he takes over the lead with just over a lap to go. And DeWolf goes through as well. And the Starn one too. Oh, and he messes up. Somehow stays in second place. And the Monster Energy finish line awaits. And Lucas Koonin will cross the line. He wins the first MX2 Ramp qualifying race of 2024. He takes the 10 points. He leads the championship as we head into race one. It's an Astan Husfana 1-2 as well. All smiles down there in pit lane. <laughs> you see the reaction there from the boys. They enjoyed it massively. Roman Fevre lining up on pole provisionally for Kawasaki Racing Team. And he topped the free practice session earlier as well. So Fevre, who loves this place, enjoys racing this place, but has never had good success here. Is this going to be the year, the moment that he can walk away from here as a winner? The MXGP ramp qualifying race is just moments away. Sir, who leads the way, is it? 
So Geisa striking early. Never there in second place. Well, Jonas. Jonas there in third place. So the fast starting Latvian going after Fevre and Geisa. See, we're in around about fifth place, just behind Renault. In fact, it's already been passed by Hurlings, I think. Oh, Monticelli's almost taken out Hurlings there as they cross rutted on the face of the finish line jump. Hurlings now up into sixth place, though. But it's Jorge Prado who is lining up the Frenchman here and muscles him aside. No messing around, moves his way into fourth place. And it's going to be the first round qualifying race victory for Team HRC and Tim Geiser. He lights the candles here, he takes the 10 points, and the championship leader's red plate 